Well, listen, I, I, I'll go second best because I know I'll come out on top when I finish. I feel it. like you're tricking me. Right, so welcome to the Next Level Kitchen where we're taking your kitchen skills to the next level by teaching you the basic tips, great tricks, and more importantly, helping you elevate your cooking throughout. That's right, Gordon. And what better way to kick off this series than by getting deep into one of America's favorite proteins, chicken. The chicken. It has to be one of the most popular proteins anywhere on the planet, right? The, the most. Delicious. Let's head to the first level and walk through some key things you may not have known about the humble chicken. What's your favorite piece? So for me, honestly, I'm gonna be a thigh person. A thigh and the wings, come, you know. I'm a great, yeah, there's a lot of flavor. It's on the bone. That's where the flavor is a lot of times. So the cheap cuts are the drums and the thighs and the wings. The expensive cuts are the breasts. The breasts are very unforgiving. So nine times out of 10, skin side down, poached, or even lightly floured so they get a touch of color, but they need looking after because they dry out quickly. It's just true, that's true. Breasts are really, really tough to cook because they're super lean, but they're also really healthy for you. They are very healthy, that's a good point. Um, I'm gonna cook a dish, you're gonna cook a dish. I know you're gonna go straight for those thighs. I feel like you're tricking me. I'm taking the breast. I'm gonna take the breast. I'm taking the breast. Right, I'm gonna do thighs. This is a dish that I cook for the kids all the time, especially at weekends. It's a sticky lemon sort of saute chicken with crushed potatoes, so super simple. And this is a real go-to staple at the weekends, especially with a full household. Yeah? I love it. I love it because it's really forgiving, right? Mm -hmm. It's juicy, it's tender. And nine times out of 10, when you're cooking chicken on the bone, everyone panics about the bone and it not being cooked properly. So take your knife, get the tip, and just go through, and just gently go through. And what happens now, when we start to sear those thighs, all that heat goes through to the bone, and there's no pink, especially that. for the kids, right? Yeah, I love that. And I actually don't do the sort of uh, paring knife bit right there, so that's something you're teaching me. I appreciate that. Touch of oil, okay? I'm gonna get the sticky bit in a minute. First of all, get that oil up, okay? Skin side down, why? because that's where all the flavor is. So we go in, whack up the gas, start off rendering that fat down. And then from there, literally, keep them skin side down. I don't like throwing away all that seasoning. I'm a big stickler. Once you've seasoned your chicken, get all that season into the pan. Now, a little wash of the hands. So once you've got that nice little sizzle and that sear on there, keep the heat in the pan. Now we're gonna start with the sticky caramelized lemon. Get your lemon and literally just nice, long wedges. We're not taking the pips out. We're not gonna zest it. I want the lemon literally just in, getting nice and fragrant. I love that. Yeah? That is a nice tip right there. And I love that. I love the fra like sticky lemon. Yeah. It just sounds appetizing to me. You know, when my kids were growing up, they called this their posh chicken. Didn't know it's the cheapest cut. They thought because of the stickiness and how unctuous and delicious they were, it was posh chicken. That, that, that is truly next level if you got your kids eating chicken thighs, bone-in chicken thighs as well. Absolutely. Now the breasts, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, the breasts. So let's listen, my kids may be not as posh, but like, you know, living in California, super into fitness. They want the chicken breast, even though it kills me, Gordon, as a chef sometimes, to cook a boneless, skinless chicken breast. But that's what I have right here. Now, what do I love about chicken breast is that it is lean. Yeah. You have to be really careful about it. And you wanna make sure that you don't overcook it. So to not overcook it, what I'm gonna do is a technique called butterflying the breast. And what I'm just gonna take is my paring knife and then just make a little bit of in an insert into the actual breast filet right here to sort of open it up, sort of make it into this heart shape. Nice. And what that's gonna do is it thins out the chicken. Mm -hmm. You can see how thin it is right now, and it's going to cook a lot quicker. Uh, and, and this is perfect if you only have 10 minutes left. You're on, some, you're on the bottom level, you got 10 minutes left. You have to cook something quick, butterfly the chicken. So of course what I'm gonna do now is I have a pan heating up and I wanna season my chicken. I'm also serving mine, Gordon, with potatoes. So we have some similarities going on here. I'm gonna toss my uh, potatoes in like a salsa verde. Love it. Uh, and then I'm gonna make a quick sauce for that and a little bit of salad. But first thing I'm gonna do, of course, Get my pan hot. It's so important to get a pan hot. And then I'm gonna season my chicken breast. You gotta season from way up top. Why do you season from up high? It gets the salt and the pepper all over the chicken. It disperses the seasoning, and that's gonna give us 
some tasty, delicious food. So I got hot cast iron pan. And this is another tip that I love. I'm gonna use clarified butter or ghee. It's butter that have the milk solids removed so that the butter's not gonna brown, but it's give, gonna give me that golden brown sort of crust and that buttery flavor that I want. How do you know when to cook? You saw Gordon's pan, he had to get it hot. Same thing here, even maybe more important for the chicken breast because it's so thin and I don't wanna overcook it. You can see, and I'm looking at the pan, nice. I can see the smoke. When it just starts to smoke, that's perfect. I'm gonna start cooking my chicken, and Gordon, I'm gonna send it back over to you here. Great. Now, that chicken's getting really nice and colored, okay? I've turned it over, so you can see that skin caramelizing, and now you can start to see that lemon literally getting very sticky. Take your knife again, and just pierce the top of that skin, closer to the bone, and this is gonna ramp up and speed up that process. Now, I've got garlic, shallots, a little bit of thyme in there, and now my lemon's starting to caramelize, okay? But I've got these potatoes, they're leftover bull potatoes from last night's dinner, and all I'm doing is getting them on a flat surface and pressing them down, because once I've seared that chicken, okay, I'm gonna use the chicken flavor from that fat to cook these potatoes in. So, shallots caramelizing nice and sweet, lemon doing its job, Take the chicken out, okay? And with the same fat, now stick my potatoes in, okay? And what happens here is that these potatoes get really nice and crispy. All that lovely flavor, the thyme, the garlic, the shallots, lemon and potatoes, trust me, really, really, really good. I love that, and a key lesson there, right, is all of the flavor from the chicken, like you just said, are now getting soaked up into those potatoes. Absolutely. It's a one-pot meal. Absolutely. That's pretty unbelievable and fantastic. Let's grab a spatula over here, see how we're doing on our, our chicken, getting nice and golden brown. Now again, with the chicken breast, what I don't want is it to be super, super dark. I want it to be just nice and golden brown. So I'll flip the chicken, and then I'm gonna start basting this, right? I don't care if it's the humble chicken breast and it doesn't cost a lot of money. I wanna treat it yes. like it's on the third level. Even if it's a bottom level dish, I'm gonna take my garlic clove and then just smash the garlic. I'm gonna toss some garlic in the pan. I'm gonna toss a, a couple sprigs of thyme in the nice. pan. And then I'm gonna throw some whole butter in there. Why do I add whole butter after the clarified butter? Because now I want that whole butter flavor, that nuttiness of the butter, and now this is where you have maybe a, you know, a $6 chicken breast. You're gonna treat it like a $60 steak in a restaurant, and I'm just gonna baste this. Jeez. I'm just gonna baste this chicken and get all that butter flavor in there. It's in a sort of butter garlic jacuzzi. Love okay, it. I'm cooking this breast. It's almost done, Gordon. Love what it. do you got going on over there? I've just popped the chicken thighs into the oven for the moment. I'm turning these potatoes over and get them really nice and sort of crispy. Now here's where the magic and the sticky part starts going to overdrive. We call it a smashed potato. So they're squashed, so they get them really nice and crispy. The starch is still in there. Taking this dish to the next level. I'm frying my potatoes in all that delicious chicken flavor. And here's how the chicken becomes a sticky lemon chicken. Take a touch of soy sauce. That helps to make it really nice and seasoned. Gives that nice dark richness as well. A little touch of sherry vinegar. You could use white wine vinegar. Sherry with the chicken, delicious. Just a touch. From there, a little bit of honey. And literally a tablespoon of honey. Beautiful. And now you can see how this thing's coming together, almost like a, a little glaze, a sticky soy glaze. A couple of tablespoons of stock. And then we get our chicken out of the oven. Keeping the momentum, and now that's gonna go back in. That smells delicious. Oh my goodness. It looks me. amazing. Over in. here, I got the boneless, skinless chicken breast. It's just about done. I'm waiting for that to finish. The brown butter's in the pan. Now I have to make my sauce because your sauce is next level already. And this is gonna be a super humble sauce. It's just a salsa verde or a chimichurri. It's parsley and it's tarragon. That's what I have on the board right here with a little bit of garlic. And then I'm gonna get in here. You can pop it in the blender if you want, but maybe you're in the, the basement level kitchen and you don't have blenders and you're just gonna use your hands. You're just gonna take your knife and you're just gonna mince it up just like this. So Rich is doing a really nice sauce. I'm gonna keep this light. Think about the sticky lemon chicken in there. So I've got a bit of arugula, okay, lemon zest. Every time we got all these beautiful 
lemons and oranges at home, we're always zesting. Take the juice, fresh lemon juice, and just a sprinkling, okay, of extra virgin olive oil. Give that a really nice light toss, and then just mix that up. Arugula is very peppery, so it doesn't need pepper. A touch of salt, lemon juice, lemon zest, and a nice light coating of juice. Now, just get some really nice shavings of Parmesan. And I quite like the sort of nice long curls rather than just grated. It's a lot easier to eat. And also, it doesn't go soggy. How's that uh, beautiful breast of yours? Yeah, the breast is coming out. So I love this. Even though, you know, we're not gonna eat all this butter, I'm gonna let the breast rest while I finish the sauce. And then I'm just gonna pour over that brown garlic butter and sort of let that chicken breast sit in some of that fat and that butter because the breast itself is so lean. And then back over here, I'm just gonna finish up this salsa verde or this pesto, this chimichurri, whatever you wanna call it, I'm gonna call it delicious. We have parsley, we have tarragon, but if you like mint and cilantro and basil, put in this whatever you'd like. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. There's some vinegar in there. Uh, Gordon, I don't know how you feel about capers, but one of my favorite ingredients of all Yeast. time. Capers bring that nice salinity, the brininess to it. And then, uh, listen, I live in California. I love jalapenos. So we're gonna make this a little spicy. We're gonna add some diced jalapeno. Uh, and because parsley and olive oil sometimes can be a little bitter, I'm just gonna put a squeeze of honey in there just to offset some of that bitterness. And now I have my dressing. What am I gonna do with it? I'm gonna toss my potatoes in it. Now you made those amazing smashed potatoes. You got all that texture. Yes. I'm gonna do what I tell my chefs on Next Level Chef to do. Sometimes let a potato just be a potato. Just exactly. these small little potatoes have been steamed. Another key ingredient that I'm gonna toss into this sauce Anchovy paste. Love that. It's got a little bit of umami. Umami is a savory flavor. It's gonna wake this dish up, not make it fishy. My sauce is almost done. Gordon, how are you doing? Next level plating. You look like you're gonna go down that little bit of sophistication and that fine dining route. I'm gonna keep this very simple. So family style, start off with a starch and just build out those beautiful crispy potatoes, okay? So they've been fried in that chicken fat, so the flavor is delicious. Got a little bit of thyme on there. It's got a little bit of garlic on there. It's a great way of using leftover new potatoes. Now, give them some height so we can grab them properly. And then look at this, the chicken. Let that reduce down into a beautiful glaze. And then literally lift that over, place. Now you can see just how sticky that is. And the sauce is just almost like a sort of cross between a light citrus teriyaki to the most amazing, beautiful, almost like a little fresh hoisin sauce. I'm gonna keep the garlic in there, the lemon in there, because all you do is squeeze that lemon over. And then I'm gonna drizzle some sauce. I'm gonna use everything in my pan, this whole one pan wonder. It's got that beautiful charm. And then finally, a nice handful of salad over those potatoes. That gives it the color, the freshness. And there we have the beautiful sticky lemon chicken thighs. Richard? Oh my gosh, Gordon, I have to be honest, that is looking like it's ready for the top level over there. Sticky lemon chicken. I don't know if I can compete with you, Gordon, but I'm gonna try. Over here we have these potatoes that were steamed uh, in their jackets here, whole little baby potatoes with this salsa verde. Beautiful. And I'm just gonna plate these right on top uh, of our boneless, skinless chicken breast. Uh, I put a little bit of the pan juices from the potato into the chicken as well. My favorite little bits here, some of the capers and some of the herbs I'm gonna put on. And then just like you did, I have over here some of these awesome little pea shoots that I'm just gonna clip out of the window box, out of their container over here. I love pea shoots for their texture. We have a little bit of watercress salad, and I'm not even gonna dress it. I'm just gonna barely toss it in the vinaigrette that was in the bowl with the potatoes. And then just, I always like to do this. I like to tell my chefs, let it fall like it sort of fell, maybe from the platform, from level three uh, down to the basement, or more importantly, maybe like it just parachuted from the sky. A little touch of zest, just to give it that little touch of vibrancy. That looks amazing. Oh my gosh. I want to eat yours right now, chef. Honestly, likewise. Great job, bud. Yeah. Well done. Now, there you go. That's how to take your chicken dish to the next level. Now, to get the ingredients, 
and more details on the recipes from today, please check the description below and be sure to subscribe for more amazing recipes and episodes from Rich and myself from the Next Level Kitchen.